As the first fleet of the Terran entered the system of GRD-6, I watched as they scanned the system, and they noted a total of 75 Galavrak warships of every make and cannon, almost five times the first fleet's number which the Terran war leaders call carry yards. This was it. They would be crushed here and now, but I needed to leave. I couldn't be on the bridge of their warship when it was destroyed. As I requested to be taken to my personal craft, their war leader laughed and said, I quote, they aren't even in our weapons range yet, and you want to leave? The sheer unyielding amusement on his damned face grated on my instinct to slay him right there. Then the human ambassador spoke up. Ambassador Lanha, this is the best seat in the house. You requested to see how we conduct war. This is where you can see it best. That damned monster that had so easily been baited by the Galavric into war looked like he was positive of their victory. If you can assure my safety, then I shall remain. However, when this battle turns for the worst, I want the fastest way off this ship. No sooner than my statement settled did the crew began to go to work. Their war leader barked orders and requested information. I heard one crewman, a woman with a shortcut pale yellow fur, said that the Galavric hadn't made landfall and the garrison forces were smacking them away. An odd thought came to me when I had heard that a garrison force on this backwater colony, not even one of strategic value according to the comm officer, a role of a battle clan that sends and receives information that is broadcast, had been keeping the Galavrak Kozaks away. And then the intel officer, a role of a battle clan that reports enemy activity and scans the regional system, stated that he was confused by the movements of the Galavric fleet. He displayed a closer image of the Galavric fleet. I will note here that the distance between the two fleets was still around the sum of 15 giga units of distance, and yet the image before me was clear as if I was next to them. The war leader turned to me with a confused look on his face and asked, are they moving into broadside formation? I gave the approximation of a nod, a human gesture of affirmation, and waited for the war leader to respond. I had hoped that he would respond in dread of what he faced. Instead, he laughed again. At first, I mistook it for madness. He was broken, unable to lead his little fleet, until I saw his face. Their war leader was laughing again. This time, like a man possessed, he roared aloud enough that I winched at the volume and tone, but his face took even me by surprise. He was, as the humans call it, grinning. This is a wide and exaggerated smile that made as many of the fangs of this human as visible as possible. I have been told that this gesture is made when a human has made a self-affirmation of something as absolute truth. I waited to see his next orders, what I heard dumbfounded even myself. He simply said, bring us into weapons range and let's teach these four arm incestuous aliens what happens when you present a larger target. I will assert here and now that I am not a war leader nor a battle clan. However, I do have an understanding of basic galactic void combat. When two fleets meet in void, they will begin to circle each other slowly, closing the gap until weapons range is achieved, then both fleets will fire salvo after salvo until one fleet is rendered immobile, at which point boarding actions will take place to seize the enemy vessels. However, the humans even sneer at this noble form of naval combat as ineffective. The human fleet advanced straight at the Galavrek, not turning their broadsides to them. At about 8.5 giga units, the Terrans stopped, and I had hoped they saw the error of their way and would now turn, that they would now follow the example of their betters. But I was not ready for what I heard next. The intel officer leaned back and said in an almost gleeful voice, Weapons range achieved. High Emperor, if you read this, do understand that I had not fed you any false information. The Terrans' maximum range is 8.5 giga units, nearly four times our laser cannon range. At first, I didn't believe it had I not heard the weapons officer. A role of a battle clan that is to power and target weapon system and prove targeting solutions. Yell a moment after. Weapons are hot, tubes are loaded, nukes ready, and PDS are deployed and waiting, sir. I looked to my fellow ambassador, a whirlwind of emotions flooding every inch of my being. He smiled and said, the show is about to start. Also, do remember to read over that document. I watch in awe and the humans fired their MACs. At first, the ship did nothing for a nanocycle, and then I heard it a groan thought out the ship as thou something had hit it. However, out the viewport of the vessel, 
I saw spears of light race across the heavens and dimed as this flew at the Galavrak. A moment later, I saw no less than 15 Galavrak ships implode at the impact. Every ship in the Terran fleet had not only hit its target, but obliterated it. Before I could take in what I had seen, the war leader commanded that fire half the tubes in a crane wing formation. As soon as the order had been given, I watch in horror as the as a clutch of hatches on the prow of the vessel opened and a smaller flotilla of cylindrical ships flew out and began to arch both above and below the Galavrek fleet, and I for the first time in nearly 300 loops prayed. If these Max were so deadly, why have more than one weapon system? Needless to say, I learned nanocycles later, these tubes the humans spoke of work like a high-output scatter laser cannon, as each tube begins to approach its target, it would unravel into thousands of smaller vessels, each carrying an explosive device equal to a calarious mortar shell. I saved the worst of this weapon for last. I thought that these tubes were piloted by a human, however, upon questioning the ambassador after the battle, he stated, They are self-guiding, we point, and it will get its target. I watched as this new race, still fresh to the doorway of the galaxy, had in the span of five nanocycles laid 42 Galavrak ships of the line to a quick and dishonorable death. My blood boiled for the first time since I was a brood pap. This, my emperor, is not the worst, I have to tell you. The Terran's last weapon that they used in this battle, it is the most horrifying. The war leader called for nukes to be fired at all the Galavrak that remained but one. I watch, and out of the prowl of every ship that had fire between two to three vessels each, much smaller than the tubes. This propelled themselves for a few seconds before shutting off their drives. I watched in horror and dread as I first saw the ships at the ends of their formation flash like stars, burning brightly for a moment before vanishing. Had the rest missed? I pondered before the heavens shone with the light of a thousand suns and vanished just as quickly. I looked to the war leader and then the ambassador, seeking an answer as to what I had witnessed. The response gave me all the reasons I needed for the end of this report. Thermonuclear missile, much like your people first, void ships, rockets bit with a bit more. And so, my great emperor, it is with a heavy heart and dread for the fate of our people that I must now ask the near unthinkable and will throw my life at your feet if I mean you heed my words. We must not, under any and all circumstances, be the enemy of humanity. For if we are and we are doomed, I implore you to sign the document that I am transmitting and beg of you to now do not seek out the humans in any theater of combat. Ambassador Lanha. The council was silent. The Galavric ambassador was a husk of his former self. He was once an imposing figure, bulked from muscle training and a hearty diet. But now he looks malnourished and gaunt and his voice weak. I call the human ambassador. He spoke into a microphone at the podium. The human ambassador stood from his seat by the Larishi. Humanity hasn't been given a seat, but was there as an allied guest of the Larishi. He walked down to the center floor. What do you want? He growled. His anger of the Galavrak seeped into every word. We surrender. We placed our fate in your hands. All we wish to ask is for you to show us mercy. Galavrick said, we see now why you wished for peace. We know why you have rules for war, and we offer you our conditional surrender. What were the two things we said to you to all of you? The human asked aloud. What? The Galavrick looked confused. What were our only two messages to you in this council? The human asked again. We wish to surrender. Why does this matter? The Galavrick ambassador said. Because we warned you. The human roared back, pointing his finger. We told you to sign. We told you not to attack or kill civilians. We said you would die if you crossed the line, the human said before calming down. So, no, we don't accept. We pulled your logs and we know about Balgiga. The Galavrick ambassador froze. His face drained of color and his hand began to shake. The human glared at the Galavrick down. Should I tell the council what it is? He said, watching the Galavrick. I, the Galavrick started, I... I guess I will, the human said and turned to face the council. Balgiga is a special protocol for all admirals of the Galavrick fleets. If the flagship is the last ship to survive a battle, it is to detonate their main and secondary reactor as close to their primary objective. The human took a deep breath and exhaled from his nostrils. 
I'm sure most of you know that the explosion is enough to start a chain reaction that will destroy most habitable planets. He paused. As I am sure most of you know, this council has laws against the intentional destruction of a habitable planet. So I ask, what was most Galavric Admiral's primary objective? The human stopped A turned back to the Galavrak ambassador. We don't accept anything less than an unconditional surrender of all of your entire galactic holdings and people, he said with a hard tone. And anyone involved in Balgiga Protocol will be handed over for trial. The Galavrak ambassador sunk in his seat a bit. What will happen to them? They will be placed in a habitat on a lifeless rock in your home sector. Then we will place a primary and secondary reactor on the other side of said rock. We figure they will have exactly five hours until the reaction reaches them, but they will most likely meet their end about an hour or two before then, as the radiation wave will have ravaged most of their internal organs, the human said with what sounded like cooled wrath. You see, that is the fate they authorize to happen to not one but three of our colonies. They will go into hell feeling the excruciating pain that they have inflicted, and they will know the whole way that they were warned of their fate. And what of my people, those who had and haven't fought? The Galavric asked hesitantly. Your Imperium will be destroyed. Your people given name will be changed and will be made a protectorate under the Terran Union for a sum of 500 human years. The combatants will be checked on a case-by-case -case basis for any who have committed war crimes as outlined by the Geneva Convention. Those found guilty will be punished accordingly. Those who haven't broken our laws of war will be allowed to return home. The human answered as if there was no doubt about his union's victory. As for you, Ambassador, we know about your involvement, and a suitable sentence has already been chosen. The council room was eerily silent as the last word hung in the air. What will you do with me? The Galavric shuddered. We are making you the historian. You will be sent to a different station every cycle, and you will tell all you meet that you are the last Galavrek. That when you had the choice to save your people and stay humanity's wrath, you instead choose to fan it. And when that flame you kindled grew far greater than you could imagine, it was you that doomed your people and yourself to this fate. When you signed the Balgiga Protocol into active use, you will be the last Galavrak. The Galavrak rose slowly, and the five human months of war had worn him down. I, the Galavrak ambassador, find these terms unacceptable. We will never bend the knee to you. Five months later, the Galavark homeworld was virus-bombed by a Terran Union's first fleet. The ambassador and his cousin, the Galavark Emperor, were found among the dead. Along with their 50 collaborators, they had all attempted to wait out the virus in a well-supplied bunker. They had underestimated the terrain virus lifetime. Their remaining holds surrendered unconditionally. Human civilian lives lost to Galavrak forces 1.3 million across six colonies. Galavrak civilians saved from Galamar 3,002,745,674. Galavrak in their language means proud warrior. After the war, they willingly accepted a new name. Kyoshian, in human terms, the innocent. 